been a while since I've just sat down and filmed, so we're gonna be a little rusty. Hello! So today I'm coming at you in Edwardian garb. Many of you know that my style mostly revolves around kind of the 40s and 50s. As I'm getting older and as I am sort of evolving my style into figuring out what makes me happy, I have definitely had a lot of fun trying out different decades and also different centuries. I feel like style is just that. It should be something that makes you happy and confident. I don't really know what my style is anymore, but if I had to sum it up in a sentence, it would probably be, I don't give a fluff. And that's kind of how I've been living my life. <laughs> People think you're odd, who gives a fluff? People think you're in costume, who gives a fluff? People ask you what play you're appearing in, who gives a fluff? So that's essentially what today's video is. I wanted to give some tips and tricks about what I've learned when incorporating different centuries into your style or your current fashion, specifically the Edwardian era. I'm going to kind of break down the elements of, for me, what makes an outfit Edwardian. So that way you have the option to kind of mix and match to your own personal comfort level. So I'll be going over hair and makeup, blouses, skirts slash pants, and shoes. So let's hope I can deliver this information succinctly. I've got my handy dandy notebook with some bullet points. Quite literally starting at the top, I want to talk about hair and makeup. And starting off with the most recognizable Edwardian hairstyle, kind of that Gibson girl, big poofy updo, kind of gives you that Edwardian silhouette immediately. I found that you can go quite a few levels of this. You can go very historically accurate with it and get a hair rat and, you know, give yourself the volume of which I do have a video on. But then there's more options that are more loose and more romantic and more freestyle, which is honestly the route I tend to take. Just because when it comes to my own personal style, I don't think historical accuracy matters too much to me. It's not like I'm going to a reenactment or anything like that. So as long as it kind of gives the general vibe of Edwardian hair, I'm perfectly okay with it. For instance, this kind of hodgepodge of bobby pins. <laughs> so for me, what I usually do is put my hair in foam rollers like I would for a 40s or 50s style, and then brush it all out, make sure it's nice and thick. You could probably skip this step if your hair is naturally curly or naturally thick. And honestly, you could probably just do this with straight hair also. And quite simply, what I do is just kind of flip my hair upside down, make sure I brush a little bit the sides and front and back and then put my hair in a bun, plop it against my scalp, making sure that it's giving the rest of my hair kind of that poof and volume, and then pinning it. <laughs> Another hairstyle that was popular that I've noticed from looking at old photos is a long braid with a ribbon or a bow attached to the bottom. I feel like this is a good style because it's very contemporary, it's very easy, there's also that kind of Gibson tuck, which can also be very 40s, 30s, 50s. It's a very timeless style, and you can achieve this by getting an elastic headband, putting it around your head, and then rolling the hair inwards, creating basically one continuous roll. And you've probably seen this trick somewhere else, but that just kind of shows you how timeless it is. Now, obviously, there are a lot more hairstyles than this, but these are the main ones that I'm going to gravitate towards. Now, I've said this before, but hair can definitely transform an outfit, so if you're not looking to go too costumey, you could always do a more Edwardian outfit and then just have your modern hair. Now, as far as makeup, the Edwardian era was very, very simple. Not a whole lot of eye makeup. Basically, I just kind of do a brown shadow and maybe a little bit of brown eyeliner and then mascara, and then I go ham on the blush. And then for my lips, I usually just take the same rouge that I use for my cheeks and put it on the insides of my lips just to give it kind of that healthy pink color. But again, there are no rules. There's no rules! So moving on to blouses and tops. Now, if I had to pick one category out of this whole video that was the most important, when you're trying to achieve that Edwardian vibe, I would say probably the blouse is the most important. And that is... Lace blouses. If you do pretty much any amount of research on Edwardian fashion, you will find that a lot of it consists of lace blouses. 
and if not lace, then a cream or white top that has that beautiful detailing. Now for me, this is a huge, huge part of Edwardian fashion, and it's honestly not too hard to achieve. I usually go to Etsy, type in Edwardian top. Now some of that will come up as true vintage and pricey, but I would say to keep a lookout for different eras does Edwardian. So for instance, 70s does Edwardian, which is what this is. And I'm pretty sure all of my Edwardian inspired tops are 70s does Edwardian. Now you don't necessarily have to go vintage for this. There are a lot of modern places that are kind of jumping on that Edwardian bandwagon. What a lovely image. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. Also an easy way to accessorize these tops and make them even more Edwardian is to add a little necktie or even a cameo pin. Little details like that will help sell that it's an actual antique top, even if it isn't. I won't tell anybody. Next up is skirts or pants. Now this is where I find it can get really costumey really quick. So I'll go over a few options. First of all, obviously, when you think of Edwardian, you think of very long skirts. Now, by all means, you can do this, and I do it all the time. <laughs> There's just something about having to hike up your skirt while you're walking upstairs that just... And it is relatively easy to find dupes for Edwardian walking skirts, or skirts that reach down to your feet. Especially if you're not going for historical accuracy, pretty much any A-line skirt that reaches the floor will sell your illusion, especially if you're going with a historic inspired top. But like I said, that does get pretty costumey pretty quick. Another option is to wear a shorter skirt. Now for me, my main interest is the 40s and 50s, so my skirts are generally either knee length or calf length, but I have had no problem pairing those with my Edwardian style tops and still giving across that vibe. How many times have I said vibe in this video? Vibe. Bernadette Banner, who is amazing, has a very good video about making a more modern Edwardian walking skirt. So that's just an example of kind of how you can modernize it with still having that historic vibe to it. Dang it. On that note though, there is no rule to you having to wear a skirt. The whole point of this is adapting this era into your own style. So if you wanna wear trousers or if you wanna wear modern jeans, or modern pants, or shorts. Because like I said before, if you kind of have other aspects that are reminiscent of the era, it really doesn't matter what you're wearing on your legs, <laughs> or vice versa. If you wanna wear a very Edwardian style skirt, but a modern top, modern hair, modern everything else, mix and match. So last but not least is your feet and what goes on them. Honestly, this is probably the least important part to me and the part that I pay the least attention to, but if I am, no, if I am to wear shoes, spoken like a true hobbit. <laughs> but the footwear that I gravitate to when I wear an Edwardian style outfit is usually boots. <laughs> There are a lot of really nice Victorian Edwardian style boots out there that are completely modern. It's really not that hard to pass off boots as vintage, which you will know if you have followed me for pretty much any length of time. You know that I have my one brand of boots that I wear with every outfit, every month of the year. I found you can also wear Oxfords or any type of shoe along those lines. I think that really helps to kind of modernize it, but also keep it vintage. Again, like I said, there are no rules, so flats, sandals. Did I remember everything that I wanted to say? That is about it. All in all, it is generally pretty simple to incorporate this era into your personal fashion. It's just a matter of trying out different things and seeing what you feel comfortable in. Obviously, there are different levels to it. You can go very costumey and very authentic, or, you know, like I said, you can mix and match. Mix and match. <laughs> but yeah, I hope that I conveyed kind of my tips and tricks well enough for you to find this useful. Like I said, it's just been a lot of fun for me to kind of dip my toes into different centuries as well as different decades. I've said this before, but we are just a bunch of meat bags. The way you choose to decorate your meat bag is up to you. We live in a time where 
Most of us do have the freedom to dress how we like, and I think it's really fun and really liberating to kind of take advantage of that and evoke different historical eras. And I totally understand that a lot of us don't pursue our vintage dreams because we're afraid of what other people might think. In my personal opinion, as long as you feel happy and confident and you feel like a badass in what you're wearing, then who cares what the weenies think? <laughs> like I said, I hope you guys find this helpful and or fun to watch. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every week and we have fun here. Yes. That is it and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. So for this week's video, I wanted to, uh, I don't know. Hello in there. McFly. You hot? I'm hot. Caps are sweaty. Why? I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> I've definitely had a lot of fun. <laughs> what? I hate shorts. My legs are so naked. Look at mama's thighs. So starting at the top. <laughs> Why does my fridge sound like the aliens from Signs? If you want to decorate your meat bag, excuse me, I'm trying to talk about meat bags. So handsome. He's so handsome.